Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Parish Brewster Unitarian Universalist Morning Worship. My name is Reverend Jessica Clay. I'm the minister of First Parish Brewster, and I'm so happy to welcome you on this Sunday morning. Thank you for choosing to spend part of your day with us on Zoom. Leading the service with me today is our Director of Music Ministries, Donica Buckley, and Twinks Hastings, our Lifespan Religious Education Director. Twinks is helping with our tech needs, so if you have any tech needs, you can send her a message in the chat box and she can help out. We're so glad to welcome you on this day. We have transitioned to all online services since this pandemic began, and we are just adjusting to this new medium and finding new ways to connect in the midst of everything that's happening. We do have a couple of announcements today. Each week we have a Vesper service on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. It is a short 30 minute service made up of readings and music and a time to connect with each other, just a little place of rest midweek. So all are invited to join us for that Vesper service at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We are doing one more parking lot service on October the 30th. It is Halloween themed. You can come in a costume if you would like. That's October the 30th. You do need to pre-register for that service. You can email cove at firstparishbrewster.org to register for that. And all are welcome at that service on the 30th. Next week is our Blessings of the Ancestors service. And so if you have a picture of your ancestors you would like to include in the service, please email it to Twinks. Twinks, can you put your email in the chat box, please? And um, please email it to Twinks and she will um, include those in the service next Sunday. Today is Bring a Friend Sunday. We are so excited because so many friends are here this morning. Thank you to all of you who have invited people to come. And so if you are visiting, please let us know where you are joining us from today. I know we probably have some people from Cape Cod, but maybe even wider. One of the blessings of Zoom is that we can have people join in even from other countries. So welcome. If you are visiting us today, please let us know where you're visiting from in the chat. Twinks just put the link to our visitor form, which you can fill out. We do have people from Scotland visiting. And uh, so this is wonderful. We also have, if you're visiting and, or if you are a new member or just interested in getting to know what's happening at First Parish these days, we have a getting to know First Parish Brewster session this Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. So Tuesday the 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. on Zoom. This will feature videos from church leaders and some interactive activities to get to know each other a little bit more. So if you have recently joined or recently rejoined after some time away from the community, or if you're thinking, is this the community for me? Tuesday night from 6 to 8 p.m., you are welcome to join us and get to know our community a little more. You can email Susan Smith to register for that. She just put her email in the chat box and to register for that and she will send you the Zoom link. All are welcome on Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. And so welcome to our Sunday service. Our Sunday services typically go about 60 to 75 minutes. After the Sunday service, we do have a coffee hour where we go into breakout rooms, which are just small groups to check in with each other, get to know each other a little bit more. You are welcome to stay for those breakout rooms or go on about your day but just know that we are so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us this morning. Welcome to worship together. It is so good to be together. Each Sunday, we light a chalice at the beginning of our services and our chalice lighting this morning is from Reverend Gretchen Haley.
Our chalice lighting this morning comes from Reverend Gretchen Haley. The longing for something more. Every little thing that breaks your heart is welcome here. We'll make a space for it. Give it its due time and praise for the wanting it represents, the longing for something more. Some healing hope that remains. Not yet. We promise no magic, no making it all better, but offer only this circle of trust, this human community that remembers, though imperfectly, that sings and prays, though sometimes awkwardly, this gathering that loves, though not yet enough, we're still practicing after all, still learning, still in need of help and partners, still becoming able to receive all this beauty and all these gifts we each bring. Come, let us worship together. Please join me in our affirmation. We believe in love. Love is the doctrine of this church. We believe in truth. The quest for truth is its sacrament. We believe in helping others. And service is our prayer. We believe in the sacredness of life to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? I invite you to settle in if you're seated or standing. Just take a moment for quiet. If you have something in your hands, set it down. Cast your eyes down or close them. Check in with your body this morning. Notice if you are carrying any anxiety anywhere. Is your stomach clenched? Is your jaw clenched? Does your throat feel free? Are your hands relaxed? Just breathe into your body this morning. Holy One, one who goes by many names, God, great mystery that connects us all this morning. We lift up the things that we are carrying, the things that cause us to lose sleep at night, fear for those we love, fear for our country, fear around this virus. We lift it up. We share our burdens with each other by bearing witness to them knowing that no one can take them from us, but together we provide a ministry of bearing witness to each other, to let each other know that we are not alone. We pray for all whose hearts are hurting and worried this morning. We pray that they may find comfort, feel comfort coming towards them, wrapping around them in a shawl of love. May they feel that comfort and know they are beloved. We also lift up the many things that are bringing us joy this morning. The joy of winter birds, the joy of leaves falling from the trees, reminding us of impermanence. The joy of a loved one's voice on the phone or on the computer, reminding us that we are loved. 
We give thanks for all of the things that are bringing us joy and pray that we may continue to go towards beauty and joy in the midst of everything in the days ahead. We pray that we may cultivate space for silence, space for quiet, space to connect with our bodies, and remember that truth that is at the core of our being, that we are beloved. Help us to remember this in the days and weeks ahead and help us to remind others of it. Amen and blessed be. We will now enter a time period of silence followed by singing Spirit of Life. Today is the day where we honor and welcome many new members to this community. We welcome you who have chosen to make a commitment to this community, chosen to call this community home. To begin our new member ceremony, we have First Parish Brewster member Nancy Burbick speaking. Here in this place, People have gathered for more than 320 years, seeking a higher purpose and a deeper life than they could find alone. We are grateful that new members have found their way here and have decided to make a commitment to this faith community. We hope that each of you allow yourselves to know and to be known and to love and be loved by this congregation. Thank you, Nancy. Now we will have a picture slideshow of our new members that we are welcoming today, along with some brief words about them. Look for more bios in the winter quarterly angle. Welcome, new members. We are so glad you are here. 
Our first new members are Jacob Bebar, Laura Fedge, and their daughter, Naomi. Laura Fedge was born and raised in Brewster and graduated from Nauset High School. Jacob Bebar was born and raised in Virginia. They both met in Washington, D.C., despite attending the same college at the same time, but they met 10 years later. They got married at First Parish Brewster and lived together in, to in Washington, D.C. They got married at First Parish Brewster and lived together in Washington, D.C. until they became pregnant with their adorable daughter, Naomi, and then they moved back to Laura's hometown of Brewster. Jacob wants you to know that he is embracing this pandemic with open arms and is excited that finally people want to spend more time relaxing and washing their hands. Laura wants you to know that they are so happy to be part of this community again. Christine Clairot has been attending First Parish for many years and is so happy to finally be joining. She loves gardening, beachcombing, collecting antique children's books, and all things French. Her three daughters are all busy helping others in the medical, dental, and teaching fields, and her two grandchildren bring her much joy. Welcome, Christine. This is Katie Fife and her husband, Zach, and their two sons, Levi and Benjamin. Katie is originally from Brewster, and they all recently returned from living in San Diego and Seattle. Katie was working in science education and oceanography. Katie grew up in the First Parish community and youth programs and is excited to give her sons the same opportunity. Welcome, Katie, Zach, and Levi and Benjamin. Jim and Paula Lieb recently moved from New Jersey to Brewster, having summered here since 2003. They were longtime members of the Unitarian Society in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Before retiring at the end of 2019, Jim was a business executive and attorney in New York for nearly 45 years. Jim enjoys kayaking, long walks, and sunsets on Cape Cod Bay. He and Paula have two daughters and five grandchildren. Paula started out as a secondary history teacher and then became an attorney focused on special education and ended her career as executive director of the New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education. She enjoys being with family and friends, traveling, reading, and volunteering in the community. We're happy to welcome back Jane Perkins, who was a member of First Parish Brewster for several years before she moved to California. She stayed there for seven years, and when COVID hit, she wanted to be on the East Coast where her brothers and old friends are. She says it all unfolded in a beautiful way that she would come back to the Cape, and she is so happy to be home. Her interests are intermediate Spanish speaking, singing, performing, and writing. And last, we have Deborah Wood. Deborah Wood has been a wash ashore since 1986. She is married to Robert Crowell and mother to Carla and Charlie. She is a hospice nurse and an educator. She originally joined First Parish Brewster in 1989, and she is so glad to be reconnecting with her spiritual community. She is a big believer in love and diversity. Welcome, new members. We are so glad you are here. Now we will have several new members read the New Member Covenant followed by members of our membership committee reading the congregation's response. We enter this faith with hope and possibility in our hearts. We pledge to participate in and support the ministries of this church. We covenant to remain true to the spirit of love. We, we seek, seek your, your welcome, welcome as, as we join, join you in this faith. We welcome you as once we were welcomed ourselves. We seek to be open and inclusive, respecting your inherent dignity, your ideas, and your vision. In times when it is easy 
and in times when it is difficult. We seek to be supportive, not only when you reach out and courage to us, but also when you need us to reach out to you. In return, we ask that you recognize our humanity. We will not always live up to our ideals. And when we fall short, we invite you to stay in relationship with us and help us more fully bring alive the spirit of love. We welcome you as an equal member of this congregation, of this faith, and of our shared spiritual journey. And so welcome new members. We are so glad you are here. And when we did our drive up for in-gathering back at the end of August, we had some new members sign the membership book as well as some sign at different locations. And so we have a short little video. These are new members who joined today and members who've joined previously but hadn't signed the book yet. done and now we ring the bell. And so welcome new members. We are so glad to welcome you to this community. We are so happy that you are here and now I will unmute everyone so we can do one big cheer. Um, let me figure out let me get there. There we go. Do one big cheer. That was the perfect cheer. You all did wonderfully. And so when we were thinking about this service, we wanted to give a big rousing welcome to our new members, which we just did. So thank you for that. And we also wanted to honor our people who have joined recently and the home that they found here. So we have a space in this service for a couple of reflections from some of our newer members. The first one is from Jess Lang. When I first stepped into the Winslow House in August of last year, I had no expectations. My only experience with church was the occasional holiday Catholic mass that my mother forced me to attend when I was a child. As an adult, I had been an unwavering atheist until the age of 37 when I had a sudden conversion experience which landed me deep into spiritual waters, but with no specific religion to guide me. I believed in something greater than myself, felt connected to all living creatures, and intimately appreciated and understood the immense power of love. With that basic framework in place, I had unknowingly entered into the absolute best fitting church for me. What started as a volunteer opportunity quickly progressed to a position in the choir. 
I then began attending sermons even on weeks that I wasn't singing. I started building relationships with the members, finding everyone overwhelmingly warm, trusting, and inviting. I remember thinking to myself, why is everyone so nice to me? Only to realize eventually that they are simply just that nice. As my comfort with the church, as well as my relationships with the members both grew, I saw no reason to not proceed forward towards the next step of membership. As this was the first time I was contemplating joining a church, I simply asked if I could envision myself in this community moving forward, and if these people seemed like my kind of people. Since the answer to both those questions was a resounding yes, it seemed silly not to become a member and demonstrate my commitment to the church that the church and its members had already demonstrated to me. Beyond mere commitment, membership forced me to place the church as a priority in my life. It forced me to make time for the church so that I can continue to grow with the church, both spiritually and socially. Now that the intensity of my spiritual feelings have been tempered since my conversion, I am forming a stable and coherent spiritual approach. Being a member of this church helps me with this process. While initially the church represented a place to volunteer and sing, it represents so much more to me now. In this church, I have found support, emotionally, spiritually, and with regards to finding resources. I also view the church as a large and vast community with a diverse membership, containing numerous skills and interests. The church is a source of education through social justice issues, through musical knowledge I've gained from choir, and through each of the highly intelligent members. The church is a source of motivation for me as well. We don't just talk about issues, we take action. Seeing so many individuals give their time and effort towards bettering our world inspires me to do the same. I also see the church as a safe place where superficial judgments and discrimination are not tolerated. In this safe place, I feel comfortable to test ideas and pursue various directions surrounded by an informed and sensitive audience. Having been born and raised on the Cape, I had left for college like so many other young adults, only to return last year to be closer to my mother. The, this transition was challenging as I needed to rebuild a social support system. The church provided me with a network of friends at a time when I needed some. It gave me a renewed sense of purpose and helped to ground me. The members of this church believed in me and my ventures and helped me navigate the challenges of finding my place. The choir allowed for the continued development of my musical passion by providing the necessary tools to learn and evolve. Specifically, the church has helped me to explain my burgeoning spirituality to friends and family in an effective way that doesn't create distance and controversy. Lastly, and of paramount importance, this church opened my eyes to the type of people that live here on the Cape. As a church that has few religious rules and doctrines when compared to other more traditional churches, I find that the wonder and beauty of this spiritual gathering place lies in the goodwill and honest nature of each and every individual member. It is directly because of the overwhelmingly loving, caring, supportive, and connected people that I've met that I am pleased to declare this church as my spiritual home and family. Thank you, Jess, for sharing that reflection with us, for sharing your thoughts. We're so glad you have found this community and call it home. Now is the time in the service when we collect for our weekly offertory. Each week we have a practice of splitting the plate, half of it going to the work of First Parish Brewster and half of it going to a worthy organization. This week's organization is the Black Ministerial Alliance of Greater Boston. This is a convener of resources, the Black Ministerial Alliance. It acts as a clearinghouse that collects and redistributes funds and technical assistance to build the capacity and strengthen faith-based faith and community organizations. Current investments in the Black Ministerial Alliance have served over 106 faith-based and community-based organizations, which in turn have impacted over 26,000 youth and families in Boston's poorest neighborhoods. Annually, the Black Ministerial Alliance serves approximately 10,000 low-income children, youth, and families in Boston's poorest neighborhoods in partnership with approximately 100 community-based and faith-based organizations. 
There are several ways you can give today. You can go to our website, fpbuu.org and donate there. You can also text to give. The number is in the chat box or you can mail a check to First Parish Brewster made out to First Parish Brewster with split plate and October 18th in the note line. So thank you for your donation today, your donation which helps the work of this congregation and the work of the Black Ministerial Alliance. The offertory will be gratefully received. Hello, our dear family at First Parish Brewster Church. Um, we will we welcome all the visitors. It's uh, uh, we are so happy that we can share with you our experience with First Parish Brewster Church. Um, for us, it started in 2017. Um, it was the time when we both met and um, it brought our hearts together. And we really wanted to find a place where we can go weekly and give our thanks to our higher power uh, God and just grow spiritually and find some spiritual place where we can feel connection with people, not only religion, just the spiritual growth. And first time we came to uh, church, it was a ceremony about uh, transgender people. And for me personally, it was a very important moment. Um, I've been searching for my, for my true me for a long time and I just felt home. It felt I, nobody ever judged me and just that I cried through the entire ceremony and I knew I'm home. And it took about a year after when I came out as a genderqueer um, because that helped me being around people and in church helped me find myself. I was always searching for a spiritual community as well and I was always kind of a seeker, you know, through college and everything of trying to find, you know, where I belonged. And when we came, everything kind of aligned in October of 2017, you know, we found each other, fell in love, and like Alex said, we wanted to express our gratitude um, to our higher power for bringing us together, and it all aligned um, when we came to First Parish for the first time and just immediately fell in love with the vibrant community and how active everybody is and just accepting and welcoming and loving. Um, it was like everybody welcomed us with open arms. and. I mean, I feel smarter every time I come to church. I've learned so much about social justice and things that I was frankly kind of, you know, ignorant to before. And it's just opened my eyes so much to what's going on in the world. And, but in a beautiful way where we can, you know, be honest together and celebrate each other. Um, also, we uh, were able to get married in the church uh, last year and to have Jessica be a part of that and marry us and officiate our wedding made it that much more beautiful and special um and we'll be forever grateful for that memory in our own church um we also have been blessed to be able to uh support the youth and be youth advisors for the past year um watching them grow also you know i feel like i've learned more about myself as far as reaching back to those years and reconnecting um, and just learning more about myself as well through them um, and experiencing things that they're going through in today's generation and how it all kind of ties together. So that's been really beautiful too. We became members of uh, First Parish Brewster Church because we wanted to feel uh, that we are part of the family. Um, Coming to church, of course, made us feel this way, but being a member, we are uh, part of something larger, um, bigger, um, and uh, everything it just makes sense. We can be helping other people, we can be example, and there's always someone we can reach to. So um, if you visit today and you looking for your place and you not really want to go to religious church, but you are looking for spiritual growth and a place where um, you're not going to be judged and where the justice is served and everybody is equal, you are at the very right place. First Parish Brewster Church, it's a family for you. Thank you, Alex and Andrea.
for that beautiful reflection and happy anniversary. Their anniversary is this weekend. It was yesterday. So very, uh, very happy for both of them. And so now we have space in the service for a little message for me, from me, not for me. Although I write for myself sometimes, so maybe it's for me as well. Space to just reflect on what this Sunday means. And as I was reflecting on what this Sunday means, I couldn't help but notice that yesterday I had scheduled through, I wasn't planning on it, but I had scheduled this elevator speech class. I mean, I was planning on that class, but I wasn't planning that it would be right before the Bring a Friend Sunday. And so this class, uh, we practice describing Unitarian Universalism in the course of an elevator ride. Now, granted, most people aren't even speaking in elevators today, much less riding with other people in elevators. But we look towards the future when we can evangelize more freely and name our faith in three minutes or less. And it was the perfect class to lead the day before today, Bring a Friend Sunday. Because if you're visiting us this morning, welcome. We're so glad you are here. But if you're visiting, chances are that whoever invited you had a chance to practice their elevator speech. They had a chance to explain why this church matters to them and why they were inviting you to come. So thank you to those of you who are First Parish members and friends for evangelizing about our good news. And thank you to those visitors who decided to take a chance and join us this morning. And for those of you who are feeling your heart rate increase a little bit with the fact that I just said evangelize twice in the last two paragraphs, remember that just means that we are sharing the news of how this faith has transformed us and made a difference in our lives. We're not out to save souls because we believe our universalism tells us that everyone is already saved but we are out to share the good news of this community and what this faith has meant to us. There has been a congregation gathered at 1969 Main Street in Brewster. It was then Harwich, it became Brewster um, later, but since the year 1700. Back then it was required that you go to church when you lived in a town. So most people didn't have choices. But nowadays you have many choices with how you choose to spend your Sunday mornings, where you choose to share your resources, which includes time and money. And this pandemic has thrown everything up in the air. It's made us realize what's important, those things that we took for granted and the importance of community. My colleague, Reverend Teresa Soto talks about community care in relationship to self-care. And that is something that we get to practice here by being members and friends at First Parish Brewster together. We care for each other in this community and we encourage each other towards self-care in the midst of it all. We try not to be a church of martyrs, giving up ourselves for each other so that we are left resentful and angry that is not the church that we seek to build and nourish. Instead, we come together in covenant, which means we make promises to each other about how we want to be in this world and what we want to create. And what this means is in the words of the theologian James Luther Adams, church is the place where we get to practice being human together. So of course what that means is we're not always on our best behavior. We don't always use words with care and concern for each other in the ways that we wish we would. But this church community is where we get to practice asking for forgiveness, moving through conflict together and returning to relationship with each other. So some of you know that the board this year has a goal of creating a church-wide covenant. And what that means is writing down how we want to be together, setting standards and boundaries for how we want to be and what happens when a conflict occurs. 
We've all come to this place making informal agreements about how we want to be, but this churchwide covenant, covenant which just means promises, will craft that in a document to help further guide us in our community care for each other. And the more that we care for each other, the more we will encourage each other towards self-care as well, nurturing a spirit of caring during these times. When loneliness is at its peak, anxiety with what's to come at its peak, nurturing an ethic of care for ourselves and each other is the most sacred work we can do. Reverend Teresa Soto also talks about friendship as a spiritual and ethical practice. And what's true is that we may not all like each other, but being in covenant, making promises together means that we are practicing loving each other. We are practicing having an ethic of care and concern and love for each other. And we nurture each other's spiritual journeys in the process. We all have many different names for God, and some of us don't even use the term God, but we all have different names for the ways that we are connected. And for some of us, God is about love. God is found in relationship with each other. God is found in the ways that we live our lives. And for some, God is that invisible thread that connects you to me and to everyone else in this Zoom room and everyone beyond in our circles of caring. And by nurturing these friendships, these relationships, by treating them as a spiritual practice, we elevate them and we connect to that which is greater than ourselves. We get to remind each other over and over again, you are beloved and you are welcome here as we go towards bringing that sacred love out into the world. Reverend Teresa Soto also talks about how hospitality is part of friendship and community. When we gather in our sanctuary, which we will do again when it is safe, and we have volunteers showing up to usher, volunteers coordinating those ushers, volunteers serving coffee, volunteers selling equal exchange chocolate and olive oil from Palestine, all of these people coming together to be a part of hospitality as part of friendship and community. And they all recognize that they are helping to run this church. And right now, if we didn't have people leading small group ministry, if we didn't have people convening our COVID-19 task force, leading our membership committee, our church would be an empty shell of possibility. And instead, it is this fertile ground where new growth keeps occurring with vibrancy and innovation and trying new things. We are trying new things. We are, it's true. Before this pandemic, the number of people who used Zoom in this church, I would say is, was less than 20. And now consistently every Sunday, we have around 100 accounts on. Consistently, your board is meeting on Zoom, your committee on shared meeting, on shared ministry, a committee on shared meetings would be a very UU thing. But I mean, your committee on shared ministry and your children and youth ministries is thriving on Sunday mornings. Children and Youth Ministries has all of these Sunday school classes happening online, including our comprehensive sexuality education class that is happening with other churches across the US that our very own Twinks Hastings is leading. We have fertile ground here. And under that, under that fertile ground is a foundation of love and an ethic of hospitality as community care. And we also recognize that we are not perfect. We have room for growth. We have room for growth in our welcome, in our extending of circles beyond ourselves, and that we have a responsibility towards dismantling systems of oppression, towards yearning, towards creating that beloved community that we seek. Each year, Unitarian Universalists across the US and the world gather for general assembly. And this year it was all online because of the pandemic. 
and we had 14 First Parish Brewster members attend, which is a record high in my time here. And what came out of that is now we have an eighth principal task force, we have a reparations task force, and your leadership is reading the Commission on Institutional Changes report titled Widening the Circle of Concern. This report looks at the ways that our welcome, our hospitality, and our structures are not as welcoming as they could be, and the ways that they often further the oppression of people on the margins. This report suggests things that each congregation and the denomination can do to further extend that circle of welcome and to support people on the margins your directors, your board, your committee on shared ministry and your children and youth ministries committee are all reading this report and your staff team is reading White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Part of our call towards relationship with each other and our call towards justice is centering the work of countering oppressions within our congregation. And your reparations task force, which some of you read about in our weekly email, The Angle, this past Friday, has split into two teams, one that looks at our history and the other that is looking at action steps for how to proceed. The history team is looking at whether people in this church and the history of the church participated in the enslavement of people, specifically people of color. And we're finding that they did. And this is not Seeking this history is not from a place of shame. It's from a place of truly telling our story as clear as we can tell it. It's looking at it and how that moves us to act in the future, how that history calls us to work for justice in really clear and tangible ways. And we are doing that from a deep call towards relationship, towards care, towards telling our story as clearly as we can. And here in this community, we have a deep sense of nurturing our own spirituality. We have a wide theological tent. And in that nurturing, that call towards the divine, towards the ways that we are connected, there is also a call towards justice. We see justice work as spiritual work. Our shared theology, calls us towards working for justice in the world. And so a big shout out to our UU The Vote team. This year, our UU The Vote team sent out 9,200 postcards and 2,020 letters to help get out the vote for this election in November. Special shout out to Diane Pansiri and Susan Smith, our co-chairs for all of their hard work. And for many, this letter writing was a spiritual practice. And this election is on all of our hearts and minds, no matter how you are voting. There is worry and fear about what is happening right now. And there is worry and fear about what's to come and how we respond to it and whether we will make it through. This year, over and over again, we have been tested. Our hearts have been tested. Our minds have been tested. And right when we reach the point, when we think we can't take any more, we persevered. But we haven't done it alone. We've done it in community. And I hope that all of you has these places that will call you into relationship and hold you when the world shows its worst because we all need those places. And for many, this church and this community is one such place. And we need these places that nurture us towards transformation and continue to say, I see the divine in you, in your eyes, and you are beloved. And we will make it through this together but we will be changed. We are being changed by this. We are being changed with each day that we wake up and face the day and how we choose to spend our time, how we choose to care for ourselves and each other and who we choose for those relationships. Unitarian Universalism says, 
You are worthy. You are welcome here. If you are hurting, come in and rest. And when you are ready, there is work to be done and let's get to work together. And we leave room for mystery. We don't tell you what to believe, but together we gather and we dream about the world we want to live in. And we help to try that to make that possible, if not for us, than for those that will come after. <clears throat> and we strive to be present to the beauty and the joy that comes out of being in relationship together, the beauty and the joy that is still present in the midst of the world we are living in. We encourage each other to go towards that beauty and joy, to be open to being surprised, to be curious, to keep our hearts open even when the world tells us otherwise. This is the holy work we can do right now. Taking it one breath, one moment at a time. May all find friendship and community here. May you find care if your heart is hurting and support for this time we are living in. May you remember that you are loved and you are worthy. And together we will make it through this. We will make it through this election. We will make it through this pandemic. We will be changed by it, but we will make it through together in community. You are not alone, even though you may feel lonely. You are beloved. And when I look at you, when I look into your eyes, I see the divine. May you remember that to the depths of your soul. Amen. Will you place your hand on your heart for our benediction? May you go towards community. May you go towards friendship and care in the days and weeks ahead. May you nurture your own community as much as you nurture yourself. May you go towards self-care. May you find Judy, Judy. May you find beauty and Judy. Hi, Judy. <laughs> May you find beauty and joy as you go on about your days and know that when you return to this congregation, you have friends here. Thank you for joining us this Sunday.